Hey, A10, it's uh, our update for Miracle Worker at Act 1. I'm going to post the summary notes for Act 1, and you can press pause or what, keep uh, watching as I uh, go through the slides. I'm not going to read every single detail on slides because we've done that in class, um, but if you do need to uh, stop it at any time, just press pause and then uh, transfer that information to your binders and uh, be sure that you have all the summary notes completed uh, as that goes into your assessment reflect mark. And uh, we had challenges of life uh, that was due on Wednesday. So now that's half marks until next week. And then it'll be a zero after that. Uh, um, teaching a skill activity is due Monday. Um, and uh, then it'll be half, to half marks after Monday at 3.30. And you should start working on your research project. And as we will have uh, class time on that for uh, Friday, today, um, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Okay. So it's important that you go, get going on your research uh, paper as that is due December 6th. And if you would like me to proofread it ahead of time or the, at least part of it, uh, you have until November 24th. And I know that's not a lot of time, um, but uh, you do have the weekends to work on that as well. Uh, so anything that you would like some feedback on, I can help you with that uh, November by November 24th. Um, general feedback after that. And then, uh, of course, send the final feedback when you submit it. Okay. Uh, all ob updates are on EdSpeed, so please uh, keep up to date by checking EdSpeed. And you can submit your assignments uh, on EdSpeed by following the instructions that I've uh, posted on ESB. So please uh, follow through with that. And I think that's about it for our updates on that one. So let's get to Miracle Worker. And we have, so I'm just gonna present it this way. And uh, so Miracle Worker, of course, by William Gibson. And uh, we went over the, um, the background in in the uh, class, but it is a narrative play. And uh, please keep in mind the context of the time. And um, and obviously we don't use um, the terminology uh, that uh, the play does depict, um, but uh, it's very important that you do have that uh, historical context in place and uh, understand that it was the, the uh, language of the times, but obviously we don't do use that language today. Um, we have a hierarchical foundation in this family. So we have Captain Keller, Kate, Aunt Eve, Helen, James, Servants, and Annie. And I'll show you a little diagram, a uh, ladder di diagram at the end of this video. So we have Act 1 where we uh, are introduced to the birth of Helen and uh, um, Kate and Captain Keller find out that their daughter is deaf and blind. So uh, a family of status, uh, everything that they, they find is, uh, they place themselves at a very high level of society. And then they find out one of their children has two challenges. And uh, so what is that going to uh, uh, say about them as a family in that society? and uh, about maybe as them as parents too. So uh, we will see what happens. In the next scene, we have Helen is a little bit older. Uh, the family has just let Helen do pretty much what she wants to do because uh, they, don't, they don't have any means of teaching her uh, various different skills and uh, or even discipline for that matter. So uh, the, um, Helen is just making her way the best that she can. Um, and uh, the family handles it the best way they know how at the time. Um, but Aunt Eve and Kate are trying to um, persuade Captain Keller to write to this doctor that may help bring a teacher in to help uh, Helen learn some uh, ways to communicate and some other skills and things like that. So uh, eventually uh, uh, Keller... Um, uh, I guess in best way, concedes and uh, writes to this doctor. So the next scene takes us to 
the school where this doctor is located. And uh, Dr. Agnes is uh, preparing Annie, the teacher, uh, to head towards uh, the Keller house, homestead and uh, take over the duties of teaching Helen how to communicate and learn other skills as well. Uh, this is Annie's first job, and she's a 20-year-old uh, woman. And uh, uh, keep in mind, women of the, of the time were not uh, very high up on the uh, social ladder. They were, uh, to all extents and purposes, not even considered people, um, according to the males who were uh, leading the country of the, uh, at the time. And uh, so there's still that ongoing uh, battle uh, of equality uh, that uh, still takes place to this day. Um, the children that Annie has been living with at the school that she's been uh, training at uh, don't want her to leave, uh, but she has to. Uh, they give her a gift uh, of uh, sunglasses that will protect uh, Annie's eyes. And as an audience, you're wondering, well, what, what does she need sunglasses for? Well, she, she herself is blind. Uh, she's had surgeries to uh, correct some of the vision that she has, um, but the sunglasses are to protect her eyes from the sun. So what will that do when uh, she meets Helen and of course the Kellers? So we'll find out right away. We have uh, Kate uh, spoiling uh, Helen with peppermints and that's uh, one way of uh, pacifying uh, or appeasing Helen to keep her quiet uh, by giving her candy. So again, there's that lack of discipline. And uh, so of course uh, they are reminded that it's going to ruin Helen's appetite and we will find out that it does. And uh, uh, Captain Keller is more concerned about having supper than uh, this teacher coming to uh, take care of Helen. And we move into the next scene where we have uh, Kate meeting Annie for the first time and she is uh, shocked at how young she is. And, uh, but uh, Annie asserts herself and, and says that she has three advantages. And, and there's posted here on the screen. Uh, she has read and studied everything uh, about uh, Dr. Howe and and uh, how to, how to care for uh, and teach the the, the, uh, um, the blind and the deaf. Uh, she's full of full of energy, very young, and she has been blind, so she can relate to what Helen is going through, at least partially. Uh, Kate is not sold on these advantages, and I put those in quotation marks uh, just for emphasis, as they will be an issue even for Keller and the other family members um, when Annie does meet them. We have the next scene. Uh, Kate brings Annie home to Captain Keller, and of course, first impressions uh, are very important in society, uh, even to this day. And Unfortunately, they're not very good with Captain Keller and uh, Annie. Annie has already been uh, assessed, and uh, Captain Keller does not like what he sees. Uh, but Annie assures him that uh, she will be able to teach Helen um, to communicate and uh, learn skills. So uh, the side story here is James. Now, James is the son of Captain Keller, the stepson of uh, uh, Kate. And uh, so James is uh, been trying to get uh, his father's attention, his approval, uh, acceptance for a long time. And his father is not, uh, has not been returning that favor or that, uh, or providing that father son relationship that James so desperately wants. And uh, so this latter uh, image I'm going to show you in just a bit here um, will show where in that family James is located on the ladder. Like how important is he? And uh, you would think he would be uh, side by side uh, with James and, and Kate. Uh, so pretty high up on the ladder, but we're, we're going to find that he's, he's pretty, uh, he's lower than we thought. And uh, so James, you uh, Albeit he's he is an adult, he's twenty some years old. Um, he's still that child trying to uh, receive uh, appreciation, acceptance 
uh, that sense of belonging in the, in the family. And uh, so that's, that's part of that challenges of life uh, that we are uh, uh, discussing in our class. And it's part of the course uh, uh, curriculum as well. So you can check that on the course outline as well. So we have the next scene. Uh, Annie has uh, brought a doll and she's going to teach, um, um, uh, sorry, uh, Helen, uh, how to spell doll. She has to, uh, in order for her to keep the doll, she has to learn how to spell doll. So we, we learn sign language, okay, uh, in, in this, uh, this play. And uh, so we are learning the first few letters of how to do D-O-L-L. -L. And uh, so as far as uh, Helen's concerned, uh, the word doll doesn't mean anything to her um, but that's that's the first step it's just to get get it to learn and how and you're wondering how to, how does a blind deaf person learn how to uh, speak you have uh, Annie guiding Helen's hands around the letters so she knows exactly what a D is what an O is and what an L is and uh, eventually that's going to stick uh, but it's just a matter of making a connection between the word and of course the object um, unfortunately, it didn't go well the first uh, uh, lesson. Uh, gets a little bit rough, too. Helen hits uh, Annie and locks her in a room, so that leads to uh, an interesting su supper situation. Uh, supper is served, but unfortunately, Annie, Annie the, the guest of honor, is not there. Uh, she's locked up in a room, and of course, that Keller is not happy about that. He wants his supper, and uh, Aunt Helen thinks she's won his first battle, but uh, Annie's ready for the, ne the next battles that are going to be fought. And finally, here's this ladder that we have uh, with, with Captain Keller at the top, Kate Keller and baby Mildred and Eve, uh, then Helen, right in the middle, that middle rung there. James is below Helen and the servants in the Annie. Okay, so that's where we're at right now. And uh, so please uh, uh, transfer those, that it, information to your book binders as we continue on with this play. All right, thank you, take care, be safe.